Was this really the best way for any species to take their bread deliveries? <laughs> the evil seed of what you've done germinates within you. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up, I implore you. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash tales of neckbeards. Yeah, some good stuff. I'm telling you, we got one legbeard saga and one neckbeard saga going on the channel currently. That is Hulkbeard and Unfortunate Nookie. Stealthbeard still uh, acting pretty stealthy, <laughs> but I guess that's okay. We'll just uh, wait for it. It comes when it comes, you know, but I do want to start up another neckbeard saga just to get things all nice and rounded out. Maybe we could start another legbeard saga. Then we have like two and two. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? This saga was penned by an author that we have seen on the channel before, and I do quite like her writing style. It's also more of a laid back thing since it's mostly online interactions from a writing coach. And she talks about all the, uh, Weird things <laughs> that some of these neckbeards want to write about. So, I've talked about it before. In the T-Bodhi saga, it is Octopreg Beard. Yes, indeed. It is time to pull the trigger on this one. So, let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way. And then we will dive right into some of this tales of neckbeards cringe. <laughs> Octopreg beard. <laughs> or why I don't take fetish commissions. Part one. God, what a name, dude. <laughs> I have such high hopes with a name like that. Hello, readers. I'm a writing coach specializing in helping people develop their science fiction and fantasy works. And I have quite a few stories to tell about some neck beard customers and general weirdness that I encounter in my line of work. Anonymized, of course, to protect both the innocent and the bearded. I go by the moniker Anonymous Griper, and I am humbly at your service. You'll be needing a short cast list, so let's get on into it. Me, that's ROP, as I said, a specialist writing coach based in Wales, UK. Octopreg Beard, Octobeard for short, a customer of mine with a fetish for pregnant women. I mean, that's not the part that really gets me. It's the octopus part. <laughs> Mama Squid is Octobeard's fictional species. Humanoid, yet somehow boneless. Victims of a virus that wiped out 95% of their female population and now trying to repopulate. Yeah, but why are they squids, though? <laughs> I can almost get on board with all of this weird shit, except for the, the squiddy bit. <laughs> Also, I should say, if you want to support OP, need her writing services, she is in our Discord currently under the Jerry Consultancy. And I will also slap a link to her Patreon in the description somewhere if you'd like to utilize that. Fair's fair, you know, she wrote a story for me, I get a plug for her, everybody's happy. <laughs> First, I should clarify something so you know what's going on throughout this story. Writing coach isn't quite the right word for what I do, but there isn't an established term for the kind of support that I offer. What I actually do is work with people to explore the quality of their world building and species development so that it's deep, robust, and checks out from all angles. I thoroughly enjoy what I do, but the very nature of my work means that I often struggle to work with characters, species, and worlds that are meant to cater to a fetish. Because that usually requires for some aspect of the in-universe reality to be ignored or distorted. Octo's Mama Squid species is a prime example. <laughs> uh, what a ride we're gonna have today. Let's start with some of the more innocent stuff. The Mama Squid had no species name when Octobeard first approached me for this commission, and he was so keen for my help to come up with a name that he asked me three times. The first time he told me, First off, I, I have yet to come up with a proper name for them. This is no problem at all, so I said, I have a system with coming up for names. 
that I can show you as part of the written portion of our work together. A week later, he said, I need help coming up with a name for them, as well as their subservient race. Oh, pregnant mama with subs. <laughs> ah, the rabbit hole gets deeper. I assumed that he'd forgotten asking me before. People are busy, so I understand that it's easy to forget. And clearly, the naming issue was important to him. So I said, sure thing, we can do that during the time that we work together. I made a mental note about the mention of the subservient race, though. <laughs> Slavery is one of the themes that shows up sometimes in the raw data that people send me for their commissions, and I challenge it if I see it being used for shock value, titillation, or as a joke. But innocent until proven guilty and all that. Maybe I thought he just meant a race of, like, alien horses or dogs or something. <laughs> Yeah, OP, totally. <laughs> Hope floats. Oh, man. An hour or so later on the same day, moments after he'd paid for his commission, he told me, hey, My main concern is that I've not been able to come up with a name for them or their servitor race, so if you come up with any ideas, uh, please let me know, okay? Uh... <laughs> What's in a name, really? Does it actually matter if the species is, like, fully fleshed out? For God's sake, people come to me all the time. They're like, Redix, help me pick a good name for my channel. I'm like, dude, the biggest channel on YouTube's name is PewDiePie. <laughs> it's, it's all about the content, bro. A name means literally nothing. Although, if it does help this guy, then okay. Hook him up, OP. <laughs> I guess. By this time, I was fairly sure that he knew he'd already asked me, and maybe just felt that I hadn't addressed the issue enough. I wasn't ready to work on his commission yet. There were people ahead of him on my to-do list, so I said, Yes, we've discussed that. I will come up with a name. Please trust me when I say that I can help you do that. I wouldn't say that I could help you if I couldn't. Naming has become a recurring issue in Octobeard's commission since then. <laughs> of course it has. Once it has a name, the story's basically written, right? <laughs> you don't need to flesh it out. Just the name is good. Here's the main character. His name is Brian. We don't need to say anything about him. <laughs> the Mama Squid had an original native planet, which I'll call Carper here. That's a good one. The Mama Squid had to leave Carper and found a new planet, which they settled on as their new home. They called it Carper. <laughs> not Carper 2. Not new Carper. Nothing to differentiate it from the original Carper, just Carper. Well, the original Carper had been destroyed, right? But yeah, I guess it's still pretty confusing as a reader. <laughs> At some point, the Mama Squid got attacked by an aggressive group of space pirates, and the situation became an all-out war. This was a pretty big deal for the Mama Squid, so the species bible that I wrote about the Mama Squid referred to them quite often. That meant that their name was important. Octobeard called them The Plague. That's a fine name, in and of itself, if a little bit uninspired, except for the fact that The Plague kidnaps a mama squid who specializes in virology. They force him to create a virus to kill his own people, and release this virus into the mama squid population. Octobeard called this virus The Plague. <laughs> and didn't respond when I pointed out the confusion that this had the potential to cause to me or anyone else who read his lore bible. The plague unleashed the plague on Carper. Wait, which Carper? The original Carper or Carper 2? It's not Carper 2. <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh, oh, man. You definitely got your work cut out for you, OP. Like I said earlier, I have a system for coming up with names. So I offered to help him come up with some new names for the things that had duplicate names, the new Carper and the virus. He didn't respond to that, neither did he use my system, despite the fact that I had explained it in full. It's not a complex system, and it would have been just as easy for him to do as it was for me, but uh, no dice. And then there was the Mama Squid's biology. Oh boy. <laughs> Octobeard showed me a picture of what the mama squid were meant to look like. 
The image was of a squid-esque woman, heavily pregnant with breasts. I took from this that they're vertebrates, or had at least some kind of mammalian influence. Please, nobody suggest that the breasts contained ink, because <laughs> I can't today or ever. Yeah, these ain't for feeding my young. They were self-defense mechanism. <laughs> Uh, God damn it, dude. I'm just loving it. It's so weird. <laughs> but anyways, the main issue that we've had from the start has been his insistence that they look like that, but they're also somehow invertebrates. Come on, OP. Are you going to come after the Zora next? <laughs> it seems to work out for them. Although I'm pretty sure that they are vertebrates. <laughs> I pointed out that nothing is going to be able to stand on two feet like that without a skeleton. <laughs> and given the mama squid's shape, that skeleton would need to include a spine, hence she would be a vertebrate. I should say that they stand like humans, not like, say, Squidward, who addresses being an invertebrate by standing up more or less like a human really well. Although that would be a way to handle the issue. Yeah, maybe they got, like, spines that have made a cartilage or something like that. You know? Could be fun. Look at me. I'm helping. <laughs> maybe. He didn't explain why he wanted them to be invertebrates. There's a lot that he doesn't explain, even when I directly ask. He did suggest that they have a cartilage skeleton, however. Oh! Oh! oh I got him! <laughs> That's fine, but... As yet, I have no idea why he feels the need for them specifically to have a cartilage skeleton, if he's so keen for them to be invertebrates. Maybe I need to say more about this species before you understand why this is a strange set of decisions on his part, and I will get into that soon. I mean, I don't know. If he's paying the money, I'd just be like, yeah, cartilage skeleton, whatever. Although maybe I am biased towards the cartilage skeleton thing, because I came up with the same idea. Then there's this, uh, misguided approach to having a perfect society. Octobeard wants the mama squid to be living in a utopia. Now, utopias tend to be tricky to make because they essentially beg the question, how do you make this world the ideal habitat for everybody? And often, perfection means something different to different social classes and species, one of his first efforts to make the Mama Squid's world utopian was to have them do none of their agriculture on planet. He told me that they order all their food from off planet uh, so they don't have to spoil their planet by making it into farmland. Okay, that's not a utopia in my book. That's nimbyism. And as I just learned through Google, NIMBYism is for not in my backyard. It's an acronym. That's pretty neat. <laughs> I pointed that out and also drew his attention to the fact that space travel is far from eco-friendly itself. Fuel is needed in huge quantities and expires quickly so it must be made and used within a short span of time. Mining is notoriously environmentally unfriendly and would be necessary for all the materials to build a craft, and of course the ports that that craft would use, I had to ask, was this really the best way for any species to take their bread deliveries? <laughs> uh, this was an inherently self-defeating way for the mama squid to keep their world pristine. Alright OP, how about this? The subservient race to the mama squids is actually a gigantic species of water bears. And they strap shit to their back and <laughs> launch them into space to go to the different planets. Then you don't need any fuel. You're just using the momentum that they have when they start their trip, right? Ooh, big brain time. And I say water bears because I think they're like the only thing that can actually survive <laughs> the cold vacuum of space. Add to that the food distribution issues. They'd either have very few starports, or they'd have to do a lot of distribution, which had the potential to require an energy-hungry, disruptive system. Or they'd have more starports. But the more starports they have, the more entry points there are to their world. There's a huge security risk, 
and or they are painfully expensive to guard adequately. Remember that they've already been a target for an aggressive species who fancied their chances eradicating the mama squid. An octobeard had already told me in another part of this species survey that the mama squid are wary of other alien species after their lethal brush with the plague. And I think that's the pirate's plague, not the actual plague plague. <laughs> I couldn't see them being happy to have so many stargates. Ah, TLDR, customer with a pregnancy fetish wants me to work on his world. Gets fussy about names, but isn't that interested in anything that isn't about pregnancy. <laughs> and how to get as many of the species ladies to be pregnant for as much of the time as possible. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you think I could stop here? No, dude, this is too ridiculous. I am going to jump into part two in the same video because I'm just hungry for some calamares <laughs> or something like that. Jesus, man. Where is the market for this book? <laughs> I don't understand. It's like, yeah, it's a, a fetishy sci-fi book. I guess you stick it on Amazon. Somebody's going to find it. It's going to be a hit with Japanese businessmen everywhere. <laughs> Holy shit, man. The interesting part is, in the overview, it doesn't seem all that sexual or fetishy, aside from, you know, the ladies being pregnant all the time. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll get to that part at some point, so let's go ahead and jump into part two and see what happens. Octopregbeard, or why I don't take fetish commissions, part number two. Welcome back, readers! Oh, it's been so long, we missed you, OP. <laughs> I'm a writing coach specializing in science fiction and fantasy, and I have a few stories to tell about neckbeard customers and general weirdness that I encounter in my line of work. Anonymized, of course, to protect both the innocent and the bearded. I am Anonymous Griper, at your service. Here's our cast list. OP, that's me. Like I said, a specialist writing coach based in Wales, UK. Octopregbeard, Octobeard for short. A customer of mine with a fetish for pregnant women. Specifically pregnant squid women. <laughs> Mama squid is Octobeard's fictional species. Humanoid yet somehow boneless. Victims of a virus that wiped out 95% of their female population. And they are now trying to repopulate. A few of you will have read part one already. And if you haven't, you can find it here. If you did, you'll remember that subservient race that Octobeard had mentioned. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting into the meat of it, ain't we? <laughs> you might also remember me saying that I don't like it when that kind of thing shows up in the commissions that I take. It's specifically written into my terms of service that I don't work with subjects related to the dehumanization of others. If they're presented in a positive light or treated as a joke or source of kink, but it's the nature of this line of work that some people will pay more attention to my terms than others. And let me guess, Octobeard was one of the others. <laughs> he ain't paying no attention. He's just like, give me a name for my Octo Squid Prego ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned from this experience that the people most likely to read them and approach me to say, hey, I've got this theme in my work. Would you accept it or turn it down? Usually have enough social awareness of the subject in question to treat it with respect. The ones who don't, just plain don't consider these issues a problem, or just want to get their rocks off to something dubious and don't tend to bother. For that reason, I have written it into my terms of service that I will stop work on a commission if these subjects come up and if we are unable to reconcile, and I do not offer refunds if that happens. Yep, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Should have read the fine print. What do you want? <laughs> However, I must emphasize that I do make an effort to reconcile before giving up on any commission. Usually, the issues that I encounter with customers are around consent and sex. And after working in this field for nearly three years, I've noticed that some people's perspectives on sexual consent are really badly skewed. I think we have some deeply unhealthy values in our culture, at least in parts, so I like to push back on these in case people simply haven't been raised to consider the vital nature of freely given consent. 
Yeah, unhealthy values. That's a whole nother subject. I'd do a three-hour video just on that, man. That is the deepest kind of cringe. <laughs> Anyways, quite a few of my past customers have become confused when I pointed out that a certain character or demographic in their creative works doesn't have the freedom to refuse consent. And because they're confused rather than angry, I can sometimes point them in a more ethical direction. Octobeard, so far, has not fought me in earnest to keep the slavery and consent issues in his work, although the struggle is not over yet. He'd still quite like to believe that there are no consent or emancipation issues. I mean, maybe the subservient race just likes it. They're like house elves or something like that. That's a terrible example. I think house elves hated <laughs> being free. Dobby was so happy when he got a sock. <laughs> Yeah, I guess this is a pretty big issue. It's fun to be a kinky slave for a day, but try living your life that way. Bruh. <laughs> I don't know about all this. I'll talk about the pregnancy fetish and the mental gymnastics he's done to get into the Mama Squid's culture first, and I'll address the slavery in another section because, let's face it, you read the title and you're here for the prego cringe. <laughs> Aren't you? Oh, you got my number, OP. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. So, to recap, the Mama Squid are biotech specialists and caught the attention of an aggressive troop of space pirates. The space pirates decided to attack them in a way that would beat the Mama Squid in their very own area of expertise. They kidnapped one of the Mama Squid who specialized in virology, forced him to create a virus that would kill all of his people, and released it into the Mama Squid community. Oh no! Octoprecbeard tells me that the virologist was under so much stress that he made a mistake in the crafting of the virus so that it didn't kill everyone. Instead, it only killed 95% of their female population. I'm not sure why he didn't have the virologist craft the virus to do that deliberately, and I'm even less sure why the virologist didn't make a virus to kill either the space pirates and or himself since surely both of these are preferable to killing his entire fucking species. <laughs> and the mama squids would surely not be fooled into letting their own best experts be kidnapped again. But no, the story is uh, very panicked <laughs> and made a virus that only killed the vast majority of women. <laughs> yeah, that, that's something wrong with that. And of course, all of this sets up a, we're dangerously close to extinction, everyone must breed like crazy pretext. <laughs> now, okay, that makes sense. Coming from someone who wants there to be a specific reason for his species to get pregnant as much as possible. If not for the fact that he wants there to be as many pregnancies as possible, so why not make most of the males die instead? Duh. He could get way more pregnancies that way. <laughs> I've yet to have a proper conversation with him about that, but I'm working towards it. Yeah, that's quite a hill to climb, OP. I'd probably just be like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Whatever. We don't need any more breeding scenes than we already have. Although maybe he has a slant towards like, you know, prego gangbang slave. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is getting so deep so fast. The mass culling of the women also prompts some big questions that I felt desperately needed addressing to make this a psychologically realistic dynamic. First of all, there's the victimization of these women. The mama squid on Carper, Carper 2, <laughs> probably don't know that the virologist panicked. Surely the women would have asked themselves, why did he choose to kill us specifically? killing most of the elderly, children, males, or everyone with a common characteristic such as tentacle or eye color would be unethical for him to do, of course. But he specifically sacrificed the women. And as far as they're aware, he did it on purpose. How would they feel about that? What impact would that have on their trust in the other virologists? About the males of the whole species? Octobeard didn't specify that the virologist was male, but didn't correct me when I described him as a he. So, if he really was a male, then how would the women feel about being treated as expendable like that? 
See, man, this is why I like anonymous griper stories. <laughs> it always goes deep with the big questions. You're like, huh, you're right. How would they feel? Probably bad. <laughs> That's all my stupid brain can come up with. Okay, then. <laughs> Octobeard was also keen for me to know that the mama squid were intelligent. If that were the case, wouldn't the virologist be better off targeting the males? One male can impregnate multiple women in a short space of time, while a woman can only be pregnant one at a time. So he could have killed most of the males to impress his captors and let his species recover more quickly. I mean, he said that the, the thing was a mistake, right? He didn't mean to kill anybody, as far as I can tell. But if he did kill all the males, then yeah, the whole planet would basically be uh, victim to the space pirates. The standing army of this planet would be dashed onto the rocks overnight. <laughs> also, yeah, if you are trying to recover a population, females are much, much more important than males. One male, 100 females, guess what? You doubled your population in nine months. 50 males, 50 females, you double your population, but it takes twice as long. One female and 100 males, it takes 100 times as long to get your population doubled. It's uh, pretty fucking ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, don't try explaining the math on that to Octopreg Beard. It's gonna go right over his head, maybe. <laughs> but anyways, according to Octopreg Beard, none of this had any psychological impact on the community. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> Except for a minor reluctance to interact with aliens in a once bitten, twice shy basis, which he's ambivalent about anyways, because he tells me that they're both cautious and fascinated by aliens. <laughs> Again, that's convenient. And they ultimately will accept most opportunities to interact with other alien species. What is going on, dude? This dude is full of wiffle waffle. He definitely does need a writing coach. <laughs> uh, fix him, OP. I don't think there's enough time or money in the world to fully fix him, but do your best. <laughs> He's generally unresponsive to the idea that the women are distrustful of their leaders, their experts, or their men. They're just happy to get on with becoming baby-making machines. <laughs> uh, I pointed out to Octobeard that they'd probably be unwilling to do this, especially wholesale, which is basically what he wants to happen. So he told me something vague about how being pregnant is considered desirable in their culture and pregnant women are seen as pretty. <laughs> the shallowest. In my latest edit to Octobeard, I've pointed out that this doesn't seem to fit. How many women would want to risk giving birth to a daughter and bringing her into a world where she would be doomed to life as a broodmare? God damn, dude, there are some dark themes, <laughs> like, underneath the cringe here. Oh. Also, another side tangent. <laughs> my daughter was doing homework. She asked me what my job is. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a YouTuber. So she writes that on her homework. She asked my wife what her job is. My wife said, baby incubator. <laughs> and my daughter's like, huh? What? <laughs> and mom's like, no. Nah. Just write YouTuber too. That's fine. <laughs> uh, too funny. Oh, God. That cracked me up. It's mostly the look of confusion on my 10-year-old's face. She's like, baby incubator. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, he fixed this problem by telling me that the Mama Squid authorities have some sort of marketing campaign to encourage more women to become mothers. And yeah, that just solved the problem. Propaganda. <laughs> it's good for the kids. It's good for the adults. <laughs> I was pretty surprised that he suggested this at all. While I know that propaganda can be a potent tool, it looks just plain unlikely that it would work in this situation. A little bit of marketing isn't going to change a culture-wide trauma. If it did, if that worked in the real world, then can someone please fund a huge global marketing campaign to rid the world of depression and anxiety? Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> it starts with a YouTube channel. It ends with uh, embezzling millions in a marketing campaign. <laughs> also, ladies, how furious would you be if you looked around at the ragged remains of your culture, 
rapidly descending into a dystopian hellscape, and someone told you, Hey, you should have kids! Come on, you'll look real pretty with a bump! <laughs> uh, holy fuck, dude. <laughs> this story has sent me into orbit. I knew it was going to be good, but... Ah, oh, Jesus. I would tell that person, Fuck off! And then when they'd done fucking off and they'd stopped for a break, they could fuck off from there too. <laughs> I think this is why he wanted his mama squids to be invertebrates, so that giving birth would be easy. If they're human shaped, then the mama squid would find pregnancy and birth incredibly taxing, even dangerous. Probably more so because most of their female workforce, medical professionals included, are dead and gone and a large number of the male workforce are likely grieving. But he was sure to tell me that the mama squid have already turned their significant biomedical skill towards minimizing the physical impact of having a baby. Yep, all we had to do this whole time was use science, you guys. I don't know why having a baby is still so hard when we have science on our side. <laughs> How convenient. My thoughts exactly. Also, does that mean that they made their own species boneless or cartilaginous? That sounds, well, fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, they rip out all the bones when they're little. I also pointed out that having a child is a huge commitment in terms of money and time and energy. Preach. <laughs> of course, he had an answer for that too. The mama squid raised their children communally, meaning minimal impact on the original mother. Oh, and their approach to sex is much like the way bonobos live. They'll do it basically with anyone, at any time. And that's enough for him to be sure that they all just jump on the mothering bandwagon. <laughs> but reader, that would be like me getting a cat. I am not a fan of cats. I prefer dogs. Hey, I'm with you on that, OP. You used to not be able to say that on the internet. My hell, we've grown. <laughs> I know that there are animal shelters full of cats who desperately need a home. And I also know that if I were to get a cat and not feed it, it would check out which of my neighbors would feed it instead. And after working on a pet shelter call center a few years ago, I know how eager people are to feed stray cats. So I'm sure that this hypothetical cat could get a good meal on the regular. Any cat I got would have a minimal impact on me at least in theory, and yet I am not enthusiastic about cats. And I also think that committing other people's time and money on looking after a cat is a pretty dick thing to do. <laughs> so I have not and will not get a cat. Simple. Presumably the mama squid would think along the similar lines. Yeah, wouldn't it be interesting to have a story about somebody who rejects all this propaganda that's been fed to them? Who is even the main character in this story? I'm <laughs> I'm super confused. Are we supposed to be cheering for the dystopian hellscape? Because I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be cheering for the dystopian hellscape. I'm still having that debate with Octobeard, but I don't know how receptive he'll be to it because it would mean undermining the entire point of his species development. The final point to raise here is that he's always been keen to emphasize the mama squid's intelligence. They're reportedly a super clever race, and that's another reason I suspect that the women wouldn't just jump both feet first into motherhood. If the species is intelligent, then, unless I've missed something, the women should be intelligent too. If that's true, then they'd likely want to do things other than have babies, <laughs> feed their own curiosity, live their lives, see the world, contribute their expertise and times, to their communities on a micro and macro scale. Their world may need more women, but there are so many more ways that women can apply themselves to their world to improve it that don't require motherhood. That unless a given woman is specifically eager to have children, she might well choose other ways to impact her world. Honestly, it would be a super cool thing to explore like a group of women who are going against the grain and you know, kind of persecuted by society because of it, but I don't think that that's the way that he's going to go with it. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, get pregnant, shut up. <laughs> I've written enough here for now. 
I'm not quite done with the pregnancy stuff, and I've got way more that I can add about other sides of this story. I'm also just out of time for now, but I'll be back to say more very soon. TLDR, Neckbeard with a prego fetish twists his species lore every which way to make pregnancies happen, even if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Want to read part three? Here it is. I mean, I do, but I'm gonna have to do it another day. Honestly, I don't know why you would take this commission on board, OP. I mean, the Tabodi stuff was bad, but a fetish commission? <laughs> yeah, this would turn me off from it entirely as well. It was written five months ago, so I hope that your business has progressed to the point where you don't need to take on stuff like this anymore. Jesus Christ. While it could be, you know, an interesting thought experiment, this guy seems to specifically want to make it not that, you know? <laughs> It's just so weird. I don't understand why. He's just all about these big pregnant bellies and doesn't want to see it any other way. <laughs> like, you could really make an interesting story that explores different aspects. Still, go ahead and make it whatever, something you can get off to, I guess, if you want. But it doesn't need to be as two-dimensional as that. Although, this guy doesn't seem interested in any of that. I don't even know why he needs a writing coach at that point. Just write whatever you want. <laughs> Describe something gross and cummy, and, and it'll find its audience, I'm sure. <laughs> Eventually. Good lord. Uh, it was a heavy one. There's some deep, dark themes, and I really enjoy the thinking that OP makes us do when we read our stories. You know, she asks the hard questions, and whenever I read an anonymous griper story, it gets the juices flowing for me, too. I'm like, oh, I want to write something, and then I never do, but... <laughs> I am capable of writing some stuff. Maybe I'll tell my own beard tales one of these days. Although I've been reluctant to because in these tales, I would be the beard. And that would shine a bad light on your humble narrator, which I'm not too keen to do. But maybe sometime. I don't know. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share it around if you should like. That is the MVP play. Check out the links in the description. Plugs, playlists, podcasts. Yes, all of it is down there. We've also got my social medias. Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Woo, come on through. Say hello. I would appreciate it. We've also got the Jerry Army. My gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons over on Patreon. And I would like to thank them all as I do every video. So thank you very much. Robert Waits, Baron Ball, Wacky Pants, Jarhead Jerry, River Jerry, TFSM Kirby, Twisted Child, Delicious Jelly Donut, Cinema Susie, Fire Drake, Giggle Jerry. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> Goddamn. There's like six Jerry's. I think Jerry's are the majority now. I wasn't lying about that Jerry Army. <laughs> Levison, Mr. Anime Bank Fence, Solid Revolver, The Jerry Behind the Slaughter, watch out! Princess Jerry, Aaron W, Anunnaki, Asian Persuasion Jerry, what, what? Assassin Pub Mom, AXN Grizzly, Bearded Jerry, that's a new one, welcome to the fold, friend! Bitch Gremlin, Blip Bloop, <laughs> Captain Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, Jerish <laughs> Kitsune, Commander J Tank, you know what the J stands for? Jerry! <laughs> Dinosaur Night Light, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, Hypno Greek God Jerry, not Pokemon! Don't you like Pokemon though? <laughs> Gotta Jerry them all. <laughs> a pimp named J. Crisp, J. M. Coon, Jerry with an I! That is a different Jerry. We've of course got the original Jerry. Yeah, that's Jerry! Jerry Satori's here, John Hero, Simboofa, cause if you boof it is free, Kira M, Kitsikin, Miss Monday, Lexi Loves Jojo, Lord Lion-O, Little Lone Wolf, Jacket's Rule, Vanilla Mel, Melgar the Destroyer, Mint Ch Ip, Mirthful Baker, Mr. Jerry! <laughs> Who is the son of Red X's uncle's mom's cousin's roommate's third grade teacher's sister, also named Jerry? I said I wasn't going to read it again, but I did. <laughs> My boy, that one, Nick. Natari. Lady Nick's Nightmare Jerry. Spoopy. Organi Jerry. Gotta fold them all. Phantom of the Pines. Princess Jerrykins. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, that's another new one. It's happening. Used to be Katie Kids Elizabeth. Sidestep, Redwind, Rosemary Miller, Rouse Tower, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ass, Staples, Jerry! <laughs> oh my god, the transformation! <laughs> Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tabioga Boogaloo, Tato Ferret, Ten Ton Monster, That Duck and Bug, The One True Fusky, The Better Marble Jerry! Upgrade! <laughs> 
Treyberg, Womax, yet another different Jerry. Good God. Zero Blacktail, 211 Jerry, a normal Jerry. <laughs> and a different Jerry. There's so many Jerry's, bro. Amara, A Roxers, Banished Knight, Barbushka's Radiated, Jerry. <laughs> Cake Jerry, that's a different Jerry. California Jerry girl, Carrot Jerry. <laughs> the galaxy's out of control. Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Crip Jerry's, <laughs> Cuban Jerry, Devon Jerry, Ghost of Alpha, Goose Says Honk, Jerry Bean, <laughs> John Endorse, KJW, Kajow. Oh. Crafty Kitty Cat, Le Peachy Jerry, Ahoo! Life of a Guardian, Little Ann Woods, Maybe Next Time, Jerry, <laughs> Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gimp, Miss Duchess, Naga Viper, Gaming Cam, Princess Rosalie, Jerry, Oh no! She's married in, <laughs> Ghosty, Rika, Raptor Art, Saint's Blessing, Spoony the Rogue, Steampunk Ellie, The Necro, Jerry Con, The Original Jerry, and Token Black Jerry. <laughs> uh, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. Promise. Swearsies, it's just a fact. <laughs> uh, it's still beautiful, man. The Jerry army is growing. I don't know what happened to maybe next time. He used to be maybe next Jerry, but I guess he swapped back. I kind of get it. That's fine. The meme will carry on. I tried to push through. I'm like, I'm going to do it super serious, but... I always end up losing my mind just a few Jerry's in. <laughs> Obviously, I do hope some more people slash Jerry's will consider signing up on the Patreon. But if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watch some more Red X videos. Pretty please. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.